Welcome back to another one of my shitty vlogs. And in this vlog, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the research that I've been doing because I'm gonna be showing you how to publish a third party library, an open source library. Is third party the right word there? I'm not sure. Definitely an open source library out there into the world where people can contribute, they can get into their projects and they can use it. Oh, and I'm also going to be complaining about some of the things that I've been dealing with over the last couple of days. Cause as of most of you know, I got my MacBook Pro and I got a few things to say about it. So let's, uh, let's get into the video. So first, as of right now, the options in terms of publishing an open source library, the, the way that I see it anyway, there's lots of options, but the top ones that I'm looking at right now uh, are GitHub packages. I was looking at uh, Jitpack and Maven Central. I was going to look at JCenter, of course, but it has been deprecated deprecated as of uh, February, I believe, and they're shutting it down as of May. So if you're gonna publish something to JCenter, don't, it's going away, which I'm sure you already knew that. So the three options, like I said, that we're gonna be talking about, or the three options that, I, that I'm exploring anyway, are uh, GitHub Packages, Jitpack, and Maven Central. So I played around with GitHub Packages first. That was the first rabbit hole that I went down. And overall, GitHub Packages looked great. It looked like it solved all the problems. There's a nice tool that integrates with Android Studio. You can publish your, uh, your library through a Gradle task. Everything looked great. The problem that I have with GitHub Packages, and I wasted a lot of time with this, because obviously I got it to work, it took several hours. It was not easy, it wasn't like a simple thing to do. Uh, but once I got it going, I realized that the wording in their documentation was a little bit misleading. It says that you can publish a public repository with GitHub Packages, so that's what I'm thinking, great, you can go and get it into other people's projects. They just get your dependency and put it into their project. Great, good to go. But you actually need a GitHub authentication key to be able to get the repository, get the dependency. So not only publishing it out there requires the key, obviously, but anybody who wants to use it, they have to have your Git credentials to our Git token to get that repository into your project. Now, in my mind, that is not the definition of public. That would be the definition of a private repository. I'm not gonna go and give my a private key or a token to the entire world, so why would they call it public? That was very misleading, wasted many hours because that is obviously not uh, you know, a hole that I wanna go down, a rabbit hole that I wanna go down if it's not completely public. So yeah, it was cool. Wasted lots of hours on that because of some, uh, you know, some wording, but anyway, got it to work and it did do what it was, you know, supposed to do. You could publish a library and get it into projects and all that, but again, not really technically public. So the next option here is uh, Jitpack. Jitpack is very simple. You know, you could probably, if you already had the library ready to go, all you got to do is you got to create a Git repository. You got to create a release on the Git page itself. Go to Jitpack, paste the URL, find the release, get it into your project. Overall, it takes like five minutes. It's a very quick, very simple way to get a library out there. You just basically create it, add it to the repository, create the release, get the dependencies, good to go. Now the downside with Git or Git or, or Jitpack, sorry, is that every sort of quote unquote professional developer that I've talked to has said that that's not how they do it in the industry. They usually use Maven Central. Um, I've still got to dig into that a little bit more because I want to know, you know, technically, you know, why that is. So we'll see how that goes. But as of right now, uh, the next, it's kind of funny actually, because I went down like wrong path number one, GitHub packages, wrong path number two, Jitpack, but that wasn't arguing very much time because it was pretty easy and now you know I'm on to the what would be quote unquote the correct path which is going to be using Maven Central so we'll see how that goes and it's just funny how I always go down the wrong path first and then go down the right path but I guess it's my fault I should have just asked some people instead of trying to do it myself now as most of you know I bought a MacBook Pro because I'm going to be going down into KMP or Kotlin multi-platform or Kotlin multi-platform mobile and in order to really you know do that to go down that that path is I need an iOS uh, device. I need something that, that has an iOS operating system so that I can actually test my KMP apps on a real device. So I thought it was a good idea anyway, also because I kind of wanted to learn Swift. So anyway, I have this thing and I've been using it and it's been, it's been not fun, I would say, but I think mostly these things that are just kind of agitating me and making me angry are just little things because I'm used to a Windows machine. Like you know, being able to open up a window and search any application, like pressing the Windows key, searching any application, something like that doesn't exist on the Mac. You got to press, press, which one? You got to press command, uh, option, space bar, and then that opens up the finder. And then you got to search the application and then you got to take your hand off the mouse or onto the mouse and then 
get the application. There's just like more steps there. And then like having to press command C and command V for like copy pasting and stuff like that instead of control. The command key is in a much worse spot on the keyboard than the control key. So I just find like little annoying things with that. And then of course my Windows PC is just like an absolute monster. It's so like powerful. Obviously it's faster than the Mac, but you know, that was to be expected. It's pretty hard to complain. I mean, it's a laptop. It's only gonna be so powerful. Other than that, it's been mostly straightforward. Um, you know, uh, you know MOBA X term. I don't know, probably some of you who took my, you know, Python courses. Anytime I do uh, any kind of like logging into your server and installing things and FTP and all that stuff, SSH and FTP. There's a great ST, FTP and SSH client on Windows. It's called MOBA Xterm. For those of you who don't know, that's what I use. It has your, your SSH client right next to your FTP. So it's super convenient. You can just like browse the files. You can also use the console. It's, it's just great. Like it's the best uh, SSH and FTP client I've ever used. It's not available on Mac and there's nothing like it on Mac. So that's pretty frustrating for somebody who sits on, you know, those clients quite often. But again, not that big of a deal. I shouldn't really be complaining about these things. So what about iOS development? Some of you are probably wondering what I think about iOS development, at least, you know, my first sort of lines of code. I've pretty much only spent, I don't know, maybe three, four hours on iOS development so far. I started doing this, um, hacking with swift thing or the going to the hacking with swift.com simran recommended it to me so again i appreciate his opinion i think he's got he's got it down pretty good you know he's done android done ios done flutter i i appreciate his opinion i trust his opinion so i decided to go to this website hacking with swift and it's been great so far it's a little slow obviously to start because it's very like beginner oriented like if you've never written any code you could get started with this course so i skipped you know obviously probably the first 20 or 30 lessons but now it's picking up now you're actually building real projects so we'll see how this goes but um in terms of like swift like what i think of it compared to android development so far um it's very similar to kotlin very very similar especially with swift ui I, I couldn't imagine what like the ui building was like without swift ui like i'm sure i would have a much more difficult time if it wasn't uh so similar to compose but right now like i feel very very much like i'm using kotlin or using compose so it's very very similar the only thing i would say that like so far that i've seen that swift does definitely better than well not definitely because it's so early it's i spent like you know four hours on it is there's a lot of little convenience things that it does for you that android doesn't i don't know i'll just look at this like project that i was just working on from the hacking with swift website like for example when you put like this this picker into this section thing it will automatically determine like what the best layout outcome will be. Like if there's a lot of entries here, is it best to go to another screen and like choose from a larger list or is it better to like do it on this screen itself? There's little things like that that this does and also like the navigation, like very simply I can put in this navigation view thing and again, it will infer a whole bunch of other things that I've put in, put into this UI. Like if I click it, you know, we've already got a back button here with a, a nice title on it because the title is, that's what the title is of this navigation view. I don't know, just like little things like that. It just seems to work pretty, you know, seamlessly, I guess, I, I guess you would say. But you know, again, I'm just starting, like I'm just barely scratching the surface. Well, I won't really know like what I think about this language and what I think about the, you know, Xcode and everything until I like really get into the architectures and designing the layers and managing the different data sources and things like that. But overall, I like it. I feel very much at home. It's very similar to Kotlin very similar to Jetpack Compose, so looks good so far. Oh, I guess uh, let's finish up by talking about something a little bit, well, I think you'll find it funny anyway. I don't really find it funny because it's annoying to me because it's a mistake that I made and I continue to make mistakes, but I'm sure you'll find it funny, so let's talk about it. So as most of you know, last week I did some updates to my website. I updated, you know, the invoicing and fixed a bunch of bugs, but of course I introduced a bunch of new bugs when I made these updates. Bug number one that I introduced was people who were uh, previously members and were registered for courses, if they no longer had an active subscription, they could still watch the paid content. So I'll just repeat that for you. So if you register, you watched a course or you watched some of a course, it didn't matter if you watched one lecture, any number of lectures, if you then, if your, if your membership then expired, and you went back to watch it, you could still watch it. And this was a single line of code that I commented out. I don't even, I have no idea why, when I was debugging it and looking at it, I saw this comment and I thought, 
why why is that commented out what what is it's just like out of a wall of code one line's commented out and that one line was the one that checks your membership and says oh no this person shouldn't be there because they they didn't pay i don't know why i just like i don't know what's wrong with me so then fixing that when i fixed that bug I introduced another new bug. Oh, this is so stupid. It, I really need to know, I really should look into, you know, testing. I don't know anything about web development testing. I'm really a quite a garbage web developer. And if I just had some tests that would run on my server whenever I made an update, like this wouldn't happen. But I don't know anything about testing on, you know, with Python or Django or anything. So it's something I probably should look into in the future. It would save me some some fixing time anyway. So what is this new bug that I created? So if you go to codingwithmitch.com, right now I'm logged in with a dummy account. If you go to courses and you select a a paid course, let's go to the real-time chat messenger. So most courses will have a set of free courses or free lectures over here. So like you can see these these are all free all the way down to like to like this point down here. And then they're not free. So if I click on here and I don't have a membership, it'll say, "Hey, you got to become a member but if you click on the free ones you should be able to watch them but look what I've done I've I've removed the freeness so now you can't even you can't even watch the free lectures I've added some kind of a check I guess where I forgot to check for the free the free flag in each lecture but anyway new bug I gotta fix this one the eternal struggles of a programmer fix it break it fix it break it repeat over and over and over again new framework new language, learn it, new framework, new language, learn it. This is our life. This is the life we've chosen. I should probably stop complaining about it, but I know some of you get some kind of sick enjoyment out of watching me complain and talk about the, the mistakes that I make. So here I am telling you all about my, my mistakes. Anyway, that's it for today, boys and girls. Do not forget to leave your engagement. Leave me a comment down below. Laugh at me, make fun of me. Oh, and if you have any insights about um, you know publishing an open source library, whether it's about Maven, Jitpack, uh, any, of, any of them, I'm, I'm still, you know, actively researching which option I'm going to go down and like figure out what video I'm going to make. Right now, it seems like Maven Central is going to be the, the go to. That's what most people say I should use. So if you have any insights, leave them down below. Don't forget to go to codingwithmitch.com. If you like the content, support it by going and becoming a member. And you also get access to all of my wonderful, amazing courses. And you can download the videos offline. You can join Discord. You can do all that stuff. Codingwithmitch.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.